Hi everybody, Jacob Reed here from ReviewEcon.com. Today we're looking at the microeconomics exam from 2022. This is set two, question number two. In order to do well on this question, you need to be at least through unit two. If after watching this video, you still need a little more help, head over to ReviewEcon.com and pick up the total review booklet. It has everything you need to know to ace your microeconomics or macroeconomics exam. Let's go ahead and get into it. So for this question, we're given a graph. This is a graph that shows New Zealand's supply and demand for wool. For part A, we're going to calculate the consumer surplus if New Zealand does not trade with the rest of the world, and we're going to show our work. Now, if New Zealand doesn't trade with the rest of the world, the domestic equilibrium price will be $40, and the domestic equilibrium quantity will be 30 units of wool. And to find our consumer surplus, we go from the price being charged of $40 all the way over to the quantity of 300, up to the demand curve, and that is our triangle of consumer surplus if New Zealand doesn't trade with the rest of the world. Calculate the area of that triangle. The height is $70 minus $40. The base is 300 units, and then you times that by a half, that is $4,500. And if you got that right with the shown work, you get yourself a point. For part B, we're now going to assume that New Zealand is trading wool with the rest of the world, and the current world price for wool is $40 per unit. And New Zealand is a price taker, that means they are too tiny to impact the overall world market for wool. For part B, I, we are going to say how many units of wool New Zealand will export. In order to find the answer to this question, let's go ahead and put in the world supply for wool. And we place that at $60. It's also perfectly elastic. And that indicates that New Zealand is a price taker when it comes to the world price of wool. At that $60 world price, New Zealand consumers are going to demand 100 units of wool. At the same time, New Zealand producers are going to make 500 units of wool. The difference between the two is going to be exported. 500 units minus 100 units equals 400 units of wool. You don't have to show the math, only identify it, 400. For part B double I, we have to say what would happen to the consumer surplus for wool in New Zealand when they trade with the rest of the world. And we have to explain. This is where our consumer surplus was before international trade, but now since the price has risen to 60 units and the quantity domestically consumed has decreased to 100 units, that is all the consumer surplus left after international trade. And so we're going to say that consumer surplus decreases because the domestic price increases and so does the domestic quantity consumed. And if you have an explanation like that, you get yourself the point. But you could also go the math route and say that it decreases because consumer surplus was $4,500 and it falls to $500. And that would also be acceptable. Over onto part B triple I, we are asked if economic surplus will increase, decrease, or be unchanged when New Zealand begins to trade wool with the rest of the world. And we have to explain using numbers. As we've already found out, there is the consumer surplus of $4,500 before international trade. There's the triangle of producer surplus before international trade. It's also $4,500. But after international trade, the consumer surplus is going to shrink, as we just found out. But the consumer surplus is going to increase dramatically because at the price of $60, we go all the way over to 500 units and then drop down to the supply curve. So that ginormous green triangle there, that is the producer surplus after international trade. There, the consumer surplus is only $500 but the producer surplus is $12,500. And so we are going to answer the question and explain by saying that economic surplus increases because consumer surplus decreased by $4,000, but producer surplus increased by $8,000, so total economic surplus increased by $4,000. You could also explain using math as well, but if you have something like that, you get yourself a point. For part C, we're going to assume that domestic demand for New Zealand increases, and we have to state if New Zealand's exports will increase, decrease, or stay the same. In order to figure that out, let's go ahead and shift that demand curve to the right and see what happens. On that new demand curve, we now have 300 units of wool that will be domestically consumed instead of the 100 units we had previously. 500 units of wool is still going to be produced domestically, and the difference, just $200 now, is what will be exported. And since 200 units is less than 400 units, all we have to say is decrease. And there you have it. That's how you're going to answer the microeconomics question from 2022, set two, question number two. If you still need more help, head over to reviewecon.com and pick up the total review booklet. That's it for now. I'll see y'all next time.